Alright guys, so I know it's been a while since my last video, um, but that's because I've really been tidying everything up and getting everything ready together so this way we can start finally on this part. And I think we're going to do that in the next video because first I want to talk about the changes that have happened off camera between the last video and where we are currently, what you're seeing. So the first thing that I did was I added these LEDs right here to the bus so this way we can see what is on the bus at all times. And I connected all these LEDs in parallel and then in series with a 100 ohm resistor going to ground. This way, um, it just doesn't get too bright. Now this is going to be really useful for things like debugging to make sure that all of our bus lanes are connected up properly because what could have happened is what's really supposed to be connected to bus lane 3, I accidentally connected it to bus lane 4 or something like that. So having these LEDs here really helps you diagnose and see what's going on, make sure the right data is moving to the right locations and so on and so forth. So I really highly recommend um, doing this. Now another thing I did is I added these resistors. Now each bus lane has its own resistor going to ground. So I just had these resistors come out and then I soldered the opposite end together and then connected them all to ground like this. And you're actually seeing the, um, the CPU is twisted 90 degrees on its side right now because I couldn't fit this bottom portion um, in the camera's view. So I had to twist the whole CPU around. So the reason I had to add the resistors is because I was having some bus lane issues and we're gonna go over and talk about what kind of issues I was having right now and try and explain them to you. Now we have eight bus lines technically, but for simplicity's sake and for the demonstration, I only need two, so I'm just gonna draw two, just to make it easier to understand. So, at the top of each bus lane, we have an LED. Okay, so these are uh, LEDs, and then these LEDs are connected together, and then they connect out to ground. Say that I put a one here, and a zero on this lane. A one is basically the same thing as just pulling it up to 5 volts, right? And a zero should be just about the same thing as connecting it to ground. One thing I forgot to add up here is that we actually have going through a resistor. Because we have 5 volts, or we should have 5 volts on this line, this LED is going to turn on, right? And then it's going to drain out to ground. And that's great because the LED does turn on. So we have 5 volts down here or it was really just around like four volts because like with power distribution issues and you can't really keep it five volts every, everywhere. So it was really about four volts on the bus lanes. And then you have the LED and let's just say the LED has a voltage drop of about like two or three, right? So that means a voltage drop of two or three, we should have about one volt over here, right? And we'll have one volt across this resistor, obviously. So. What happens is, because we have one volt here, it actually feeds back and sources through this through this LED. And you're saying, well, wait, that doesn't make sense. How can voltage source in the opposite direction through an LED? That doesn't make any sense. How is it that it's going across the resistor? Because what, the effect that I was getting is that I was having about one volt here. It's really about like 0 0.6 after everything. But I'm having about one volt on this line. And it was almost like the voltage is jumping across here right? And it was creating one volt on this line. And the problem with that was that some of these one volts would actually register as, as, um, as ones. So if I was trying to put a zero on this line, I was really getting a one on this line because you have one volt up here and you have zero volts down here because it's connected to ground. And the current is sinking through this LED, which doesn't make any sense though, because it's a diode and the diode only allows the current to flow this way, but it was somehow finding its way down here. Now, I don't know if it's just because I have cheap LEDs or what was happening, if this is a common uh, thing with LEDs that it allows current to sink in the opposite direction. Now, the thing was, the LED wasn't turning on. And if it was, it wouldn't really turn on bright enough to really see visibly at one volt anyway. So if it was turning on, then I have no idea. But it didn't look like it was turning on at all. But the problem still remained that I was getting one volt on these lines. When there's supposed to be a zero here, I have one volt on these lines. Now, take away the LEDs, and the bus lanes are fine. I'm having a zero here and I'm having a one here. So it's just because the LEDs that I'm getting um, voltages on when I'm supposed to be having zeros. So what I did is I decided to add resistors to each of these lines before connecting them to ground. So this way, in case I'm actually, if I'm putting a zero on this line, it'll actually be a zero. 
and I tried a few different resistors out, but the resistor that ended up working is a 1K resistor in each of these. It didn't mess up anything. So if I was trying to put a high on this line, it ended up being high, and if I was putting a low on this line, it ended up being low. And if I put a high on this line and a low on this line, this line would remain low and this lane would remain, remain high. So that fixed everything up, and that was the reason that I needed to put these resistors here. Now, another thing we should talk about is the power issues. Now, I know that connecting this many breadboards up together is going to create some power distribution issues, um, and obviously that depends a lot on your power supply. I would recommend getting a 2 amp supply uh, minimum, because a 1 amp supply I really don't think is going to cut it unless you have super, super clean breadboards um, that are just like, have no, no sort of uh, resistance whatsoever. Uh, I really think you should bump it up to a 2 amp supply at 5 volts. So I'm just using an Apple iPad charger, and what I've done, uh, I just went and I clipped the ends of the iPad charger, or of a different USB plug, and then took the black wire and the red wire, which is the 5 volt line and the ground line, and then connected up to this uh, header that I can just plug in and out, and then I hot glued it, um, I put it, was very liberal with the hot glue just to make sure that it never comes out or frays. So getting a good power supply is one of the first steps to having no power distribution issues, obviously. Um, another step is plugging it into the same place. So for example, I created this little outline here, and it's kind of crude, but it works because it's not connected to anything. These, this wire doesn't carry any voltage, it doesn't do anything. Um, in fact, it's just connected to the same spot, it just loops around. Um, but what it does is it makes sure that I'm plugging this charger up to the same spot every single time. And why is that useful? Well, it's useful because if you're gonna connect these lanes up in parallel, you shouldn't connect these lanes, just daisy chain them together. Cause that's just gonna, you know, uh, resistance is gonna build up over time and your voltage is just slowly, slowly going to drop. Um, so what I've done is I do about two daisy chains. So I daisy chain about two lanes together and then I have one that comes back. And parallel connections is key because, you know, parallel connections are going to have the least amount of resistance as possible. You know, multiple par parallel connections back to the same spot is going to have less resistance, obviously, than just one parallel connection. And definitely going to have less resistance than just daisy chain going through three breadboards. So for the same thing, for the program counter, I have this lane. It's daisy chain to this lane, to this lane, to this lane, to this lane. And the clock was kind of low on uh, voltage. It was doing okay. Um, and it was still working fine. But again, you want the clock to make sure that it's got a clean signal on the clock at five volts because the clock is being dis distributed all over the place. So whatever is here is in parallel with like five, you know, like every basically every single board here connects up to the clock, which means the current here has to be split equally among all these different um, parts. So you gotta make sure that this is a really good, you have good voltage at this point. Um, and the other problem became that I had to connect to register A through this lane. And, you know, you know, daisy chaining three together was a little bit iffy, and four was just no go, like, don't even try it. So, I had the clock top lane come all the way back down here. So that this way, we're not going through so many, we're just coming back down here, and it's a little bit fresher. And that seemed to work well because register A has, the voltages at register A are pretty good, about 4 volts. And register A is one of, it's, I think, has the worst voltage of all of these. And I could easily remedy that by just having one of these lanes just connect up to the source, which is over here. Just have a, you know, a black and a red wire come down to here. And I could remedy that. But honestly, it's not that necessary. At 4 volts, it's doing, it's doing okay. And the ALU is okay as well. It's connected both to register A and as well as register B, and register B is connected straight up to here, which is like one like one spot away from the source. So register B has pretty good voltages. Um, here, I've connected the output stage to uh, this lane up here. Sorry, that's just a random wire. You, to uh, this lane up here. And then this lane connects directly to the source right here through these two wires that jump across the, the bus. And the output register also connects, um, it connects to here, which is one away from the source. And the output register has pretty good voltages. And that's good too, because the output register is connected to this other rail on the output register, which is also connected to the instruction register. And the instruction register is also connected back to the source. So we sort of have, we obviously have a loop going here, just to make sure that all of these parts are sharing good voltages. And besides that, that's how I pretty much got around the voltages 
um, issue. And I thought that I'd connect, when I was testing the CPU, I thought that I was having connection issues or that I'd, you know, plug things into the wrong point, but really it was voltage issues. Voltage issues will really get you and they'll create effects that you didn't even know, like what's going on um, because you don't have proper power here. Like sometimes the voltage is low here and because the reference voltage is low, that causes a lot of these to trigger as ones instead of as zeros. Now, another thing um, you'll notice is I have these white things on all these LED displays and the LED displays sort of change so some of the LED displays I don't even need the whole I mean all of them I don't need the whole LED display but some of them I don't even need eight so for example for the program counter I only need four which will be this four and then there's a fifth one which tells us whether we're in program stage or run stage which is this last LED and then same thing for the program counter or sorry that's the MAR but for the program counter same thing we only need four bits um, but for ones where I need eight, I have to use the whole display. And I sort of flip-flop between two different methods. One is using four, skipping two in the middle, and then using the last four. And I did this a lot. And then some of them towards the end, like the ALU, I skipped the first two and then use the last eight. And like skip the first two and use the last eight, like that. Um, so what I did is I just went through and tested all these components to test where the LED displays actually were and then I used whiteout on the ones that aren't being used. So the middle ones are whited out here and here and here on all the registers because I didn't use the middle pins on the LEDs and the front ones are whited out on some of these other ones. Besides that, there wasn't really that much to talk about. So now we can get to the fun part of today's video, which is actually using the CPU.